Hey Binder fans, Jeff here at IH Parts America and today we're going to do a follow-up video on Zeus and how we took off the fight tech and went to a Sniper 2 fuel injection system. The purpose of this video today is to kind of talk about how I got the sniper injection mounted in here and with timing control. It's easy enough to put sniper in one of these things. Uh, we're not going to really get in depth on the fuel systems or any of the other parts of the install, but what I wanted to talk about today is how I got timing control to work with this sniper injection on here. Now you'll remember back on my last video when we had a kind of like a full talk about on Zeus and, and all the things done to it that I mentioned that the Phytech had died a couple times in, in, in like, you know, years of driving it. And I must have jinxed myself because it wasn't long after that video that the fuel injection had pooped again and actually quit sending a signal to the fuel pump and uh, the Phytex, what I don't like about them is they don't have an external relay as part of the fuel pump circuitry. So it kind of puts a lot of load onto the ECM of the Phytech and that was the second time it had done that and burned that out. So I had mentioned, like I said, once it died again, I'm gonna go do a sniper. Well, Holly has come out with a new Sniper 2 system under the four barrel and that's what we've got here on Zeus today. Um, on Hideous, as you know, that one's also 392 powered. I just have a two barrel Holly that we have here on the table to talk about in a little bit. And um, that one is only running on its own, no timing control. I've got actually a DUI distributor on it to keep it simple. But on Zeus, we get a lot of questions here at IH Parts America on how to install timing control with the sniper system. So I'm gonna talk about how to do it on the two barrel, and I'm gonna talk about how to do it on the new Sniper 2 system, as it's actually a little bit different. On the install on this particular vehicle with the Sniper 2, what's different about a Sniper 2 compared to the earlier sniper systems is one, the fuel pressure regulator has moved outside of the unit. So it's no longer internal. You do have to buy and purchase a separate fuel pressure regulator, which we have mounted here on the firewall. The next step is in order to have timing control, you need a distributor in order to do that. Now our friend Bill Hamilton of Hamilton Fuel Injection has come out with a distributor just for that that is literally works perfect for these systems. Now I had a few questions and a, and a little bit of a stumble along the way when I did it and we're going to get to that in a little bit and I'm going to discuss what I had to do to actually make the, this thing actually spark in the end. I actually had to do it. I had a little bit of a run around but it was a great educational experience for myself that I want to share with others. The other thing to get spark on these things is you need one of two things. You either need the hyper spark box which is the more complicated and expensive way to do it or you can just do a simple coil driver and really that's all you really need for one of these. I had gotten some initial information that I had to have the hyper spark uh, even though we are running a magnetic distributor and not a hyper spark distributor on this system. The hyper spark Holly with their hyper spark system does not make a distributor for IH engines so thankfully we have Bill Hamilton fuel injection that um, has been offering this magnetic one and like I said it works really great once I got got it figured out. Okay with some of that explained about on the travel all we're going to move over to the table where I got a bunch of goodies and I'm going to kind of go over things a little piece by piece and also discuss this some of the other little tips you'll need to know about setting up the timing control on the on the international motor. All right guys so here's the nice table of goodies all sorts of parts you, you can need and then we're going to discuss a little bit of setup as well. So we'll start over here. This is your standard Holly two barrel setup. Same thing I've got on Hideous. Um, if you were to wire up again, we're going to talk about the timing control side of it. You're going to have your yellow wire here. We got a coil driver as we discussed. We also have the HyperSpark unit. So coil driver, pretty simple. You've got three wires going in and one wire coming out of it. This is the plug for the coil, which I do recommend. Just get the matching Holly Sniper coil. Uh, I got mine mounted off to the side on the fender. Uh, the ohms resistance is the proper one to work with everything. So, you know, it's always best to get all matching components instead of mismatching parts and trying to save a buck because it kind of ends up being a headache at times. So. With the coil driver, real simple on the other end, there's three wires that come out of it. 
and with those three wires you got typical ground this would be positive hot and then this white wire is what kind of is the trigger wire coming off on this particular unit it would be a yellow wire on a new sniper 2 it would be the white wire coming off the sniper 2 unit so if you want to get again spark along with the hamilton distributor now what's nice is bill sends these out they have the proper plug already on them that matches this little guy right here so this just plugs in right together on the these systems so again coil sniper driver real simple to wire just four four easy wires and that's working if you want to do the hyper spark you can it's kind of like i said an msd box or something like that with a little multiple spark um, it's got a little light that indicates when it's working it's up to you it's more expensive um, Again, if I were to do it again, I'd probably just do a coil driver and go that route. Uh, everything plugs in. What's nice on this is real, everything's already kind of pre-wired. This would go to the coil. The white wire would go to either the yellow on one of the older snipers or it would go to the white wire on the new sniper system and then your typical power and ground. So uh, real easy to wire up. When you go to install the sniper system in, you need to phase the rotor and line up the reluctor on the wheel here with the pickup. Okay, so when it goes to setting up the timing on the international motor, you're going to want to set it to TDC, top dead center. Make sure that is on the compression stroke. I don't want to get too in detail on that, but hopefully you know how to set that up. Now on an international, these engines do not time off the number one uh, cylinder, they time off number eight. So when you're at TDC, as we show here on our dampener, that'll be right there at the zero mark. Now, as part of the, one of the Holly videos that I had caught, there's phasing of this distributor to get the reluctor timed ahead of time for, and the rotor, it's all about timing it. Um, what we ended up having to do, some math, had to do with the diameter of this, and we were at three inches, which was six inches. I did the math and it basically if you remember this number when you go to do it this is 2.35 inches at 45 degrees so if you measure out which happens then to be really close to 60 millimeters so if you mark out 60 millimeters from zero and also mark 20 and 40 that's going to put marks on a little and i just did a little label here and had got my zero mark 15 30 and 45 degrees so once you have the engine set at tdc you're then going to go to 45 degrees before top dead center once you've done that, you're going to stab your distributor in, kind of pick which side you want. I found out that with these two tabs, the way they stick out from the distributor, that it was easiest to put it, as you see, on the travel all. Make sure when you stab it in, you're going to turn your distributor so that the reluctor is perfectly lined up on zero. It doesn't really matter where this is at, unless, you, like I said, you want to pick where your number eight is some guys will point it towards number eight some guys are pointing it towards the front i typically kind of point it towards the front that's kind of how i had it originally anyhow so with the reluctor set and at 45 degrees you're either you're then going to lock down the distributor the next step is to phase the rotor holly recommends trying to phase the rotor to where when it's in between one of the terminals it is basically at midway timing pointing at the terminal. So basically at idle, say it's idling at 15 degrees, it's gonna be kind of before it. And say at like max timing, at like say close to 40 degrees, it's gonna be past the terminal. And you wanna get terminal kind of like midway and therefore average timing. So what we ended up doing, what they recommend is we bought an extra distributor cap and we drilled a hole in it on the cylinder that is going to be number eight that we're timing to. So with the distributor in there and this zeroed out, we had put our cap on and then you can see where the rotor is pointing in relation to the terminal and all we did from there was adjust the rotor on here until we found that the terminal was pointing right at it not too much before not too much after and then we ended up setting the screw down what i ended up finding is it was about midway in the end that the, the rotor ended up being seated at uh, once it was phased in now again, why did we, at what degree did we end up timing it at? Well, Holly recommends between like your minimum and maximum. So we kind of went on the video, they, they discussed 20 degrees minimum and 40 maximum, which I just mentioned a second ago. My numbers are a little bit lower than that. I'm kind of more or less idling at like 15 and max was ended up being at like 36 degrees. So um, I ended up setting the timing just a little bit below 
20 and then uh, after that that's when I phase my rotor again to the number 8 cylinder. Okay so we've got our wiring we've gone over that how to wire it up using the coil driver we're using a hyper spark and you got your coil here we've discussed the distributor how to time it by the reluctor and phasing the rotor uh, once you've done that Holly recommends you fire up the engine and you know have your timing light out you can set on this on the newer sniper too again i haven't played with timing control on the older sniper it should be real similar assuming um, but you can end up setting it for static timing which means you're locking the timing down i locked it at 15 degrees and then checked my timing to make sure it was the same if it wasn't it just loosened the clamp on the distributor make a little minor adjustment it was pretty close but i ended up still doing an adjustment on it now some of the other parts that we offer to make the sniper installation go a lot easier, especially on the regular two barrel ones, we have come up with our own throttle bracket here under our CPT name. So you can put this bracket right onto the Holly Sniper, includes mounting bolts. It makes for the throttle cable to be a direct fit right onto it along with this little throttle cable adjuster there. What's also nice, so it works great with the low car throttle cable, which we highly recommend you just change at the same time that you're installing a Holly Sniper. We have these throttle cables in stock, as well as if you're a torque fly guy and you got the kick down, just get rid of all that mechanical linkage. This whole setup is designed to also fit in for a low car uh, cable kick down, which is way more smoother on the transmission. For the Scout 2 guys, we offer a plate over here that uh, allows you to mount a fuel filter on there or two, depending on whether you're doing a in tank pump or if you're doing a frame rail pump then you got both filters there one for a 10 micron one for a 100 micron kind of pick up the big and the small dirt we have a lot of fuel fittings in stock again we may not offer the best pricing on a lot of this stuff but we have it here and we have the knowledge to help you install it and again you know we're, we're using it all the time and one of the things i mentioned in the beginning of the video is how i didn't have spark after initially wiring everything up after a phone call to Bill, we went over a few things and he told me, hey, try tightening up the, the gap between the pickup and, one, and the reluctor. And sure enough, the gap was just set a little bit wide. Um, probably was just a fluke because Bill's had a lot of successful guys that have done this already. But um, I just wanted to point out, if you happen to install everything, you're scratching your head, it doesn't work, maybe just check your reluctor gap. Should be close to like 10 or 15 thousandths. Um, I think specs like 30, 35, which is a little bit wide in my opinion. But anyways, if you end up hooking everything up and you don't have spark, check the gap. You're just gonna loosen a couple screws real quick, move it in a little bit. Feeler gauge helps, or actually if you have an old matchbook, or a business card is the perfect thickness to put between there. You want something non-magnetic, so that's why you don't want to use a uh, feeler gauge for something like this. So tighten it up, and that should fix that part. All right, guys, so in closing, that's kind of like what I had to do on Zeus here to get my 392 powered up with the new Sniper 2 and to have timing control with it. I'm sure I probably missed a couple little steps here and there, but ultimately those were some of the major parts that you need to know to get the timing to work on this thing and work really good. Um, I've been driving travel all now for about a week. I actually took it on a tow job yesterday, probably had eight, 9,000 pounds on the car trailer behind it. And uh, man, that thing was just ringing up the, the grade at you know third gear at 4,300 RPM, just zing and just pulling really strong and heavy. It's definitely feels much, uh, you know, seat of the pants feel that it's got a little bit more power than previously and I have yet to do any tuning on it. Um, the only problem I'm having currently is a little stumble issue. It stalls every now and then at a stoplight. I know I need to do a little bit more work on the IAC adjustment on it. So again, and I need to spend a little bit more time on the tuning. I know it could be even a lot better than how it is out of the box. But I gotta say, pretty happy with it. Been real happy with my regular two barrel snipers. So far, real happy with the Sniper 2 on, on the travel all here. So again, I hope this video was very informative and helps you to get sniper and timing control and just fuel injection and just your IH in general back on the road and being enjoyed. Uh, if you have any questions, just throw them up. We'll try to get them answered for you. And um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video and don't forget to follow us as we'll try to have some more of these here in the near future. Thanks.